Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm going to show you guys how to create a Microsoft Teams list from scratch. Um, there are ultimately several different ways to create lists, um, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you um, how I create a list um, with no templates and no Excel forms. Um, basically, we're just going to go straight in, add the columns that we want, and then format them. Um, if you find this video useful, you know what to do. And with all that said, let's jump on down to Microsoft Teams. Okay, so here I am just inside my uh, Microsoft Teams application, the Crypto for News team general channel. What I'm going to do is actually add a um, Microsoft Forms list into this general channel for the Crypto for News YouTube channel. And what I'm going to do is basically create a uh, list from scratch where we'll be able to track what we do for our live streams. So what I'm going to do is actually use the plus icon at the top of the screen here to install the Microsoft Forms, uh, Microsoft Teams lists. Okay, so it's this icon just here. If it doesn't appear, we can just type lists and it will appear here. So we're going to give that a click um, and we're going to go through the process of just adding this into the channel. So select save to finish adding the list to the channel. Very straightforward. So we're going to click save here and then it's going to give us a couple of other options. Okay, so we're going to create a list or add an existing list. We're going to create a brand new list. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the from Excel or from an existing list. We're going to ignore the templates. We're just going to go for a blank list here at the very top. Okay, so we're going to give that a click and we're going to give this list a name. So I'm going to say live streams. Okay, and it's going to um, give it a description. We're just going to say track um, progress. Okay, something like that. Then we get to give, choose it a color. Um, so I'm going to go with red um, and I'm going to give it the calendar view just here. And then at the very bottom, we can create the list. So we're just going to click create there. Um, and now our live streams list is being created. Currently, it has a single column called title. OK, just here. And then we have the ability to add additional columns. So what we're going to do is, first of all, um, I'm going to change this uh, from column settings, I'm going to rename the title, okay, to uh, live stream name. Um, actually, no, I'm going to call it subject. Let's go with subject, uh, okay. So that's going to be the subject of our live stream, okay. So there's our first column. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, when we click and an add a new column. Uh, we get a, a series of options that we get to choose from, okay. So do I want a multiple choice, time, date? Um, multiple lines of text, per people, persons, uh, groups, or whatever, uh, numbers, yes, no's, hyperlinks, and, and etc. Right. So for this one, I'm going to give it a date and time. Uh, and then over here, we have the create column dialog box, and we're just going to um, go with a simple date of the live stream. Okay. Um, it's a uh, date for stream um, time and date. Um, I'm not going to include the time. Um, it, I generally don't find this useful, so I'm just going to click no, um, and it has uh, today's date as the default, okay? Um, and we have more options, so we can make it required, so it should be a required field. Um, it, it doesn't need to be unique, but if you wanted to enforce unique, you could, uh, could do that too. Um, and basically, you can get some validation options, but I'm just going to click save on that one and add that column in, okay, fine. Next thing that we're going to add here is going to be um, who a uh, person, right? So who's going to be responsible for this particular task? Um, so it's going to be uh, think about who this is going to be um, person. Okay, I'm just going to call it person, so we know who needs to do it, and it's a person or group. Um, so from here, that's what we're going to select. Um, allow selections of groups. I will allow selections of groups. Um, I won't allow multiples. Um, I will allow multiples because it may be two or more people. Um, and it is required. Um, and then I can click save. Okay. So now I have these three columns. We're going to add another column here and we're just going to make this uh, yes or no. And we're going to say um, uh, set, up on, set up on YouTube. Okay, question mark. It's a yes or no answer. Um, 
actually, you know what? I might make this a choice. Uh, I generally prefer choices because they look a little bit better. Okay, um, and my choices are choice one. So I'm gonna say yes on choice one and no on choice two. And you can see now we get the ability to format these, right? Um, so I want yes to be green and I want no to be red and I can get rid of that one. So I have those two choices. Uh, so it's a yes or no, it has it been set up on YouTube um, and we don't want anyone to add anything manually. Um, and the default value will be no. Um, and we'll make sure it's a drop down, which is fine. Um, although radio buttons could also be quite cool. Let's try radio buttons. Um, this column contains required. Yeah, we'll make that. It doesn't need to be unique and we can click save. Okay, so now we have these boxes here. Okay, now I could continue to add more fields in, but what I want to do is actually add a, an item. So I'm gonna click new item, and there's a couple of different ways to handle this, but I'm just going to start here. And we're basically going to say um, VChain uh, stream as the subject. Um, it's going to be for today, and I'm going to assign this to Chris. Okay, and because it's got multiple people, I'll also assign it to myself. Okay, and it's not been set up on YouTube and I have the ability to add attachments if I'd like, but I'm just going to click save for now. So now we can see that we have these two things. Okay, so we have uh, the name, we have the date, we had to see the two people that are supposed to be responsible for it. And we can see that it hasn't actually happened yet. So what I can do is click on quick edit and quick edit. Um, basically allows us uh, the ability to choose and change and adapt each of these options as needed. Okay, so we can say yes here and I can exit that and it will now be updated. The other way to do this is to actually click on the line itself um, and I can edit it from here um, just like this. Okay, and every time it's, there's no save button, it, every change is saved for me and I can go back to the list. Okay, so straight away we can see a few things here. That's really good and handy. Now you might want to add additional columns, which we can do. Um, so we can now add another, let's say, uh, choice. And this time um, we can say, has it been um, processed? Okay. Uh, with YouTube live streams, they can take a little bit of time. So we're going to say, it, yes, it has been processed or no, it hasn't been processed. Okay, and we'll remove that one because we don't need it. Uh, they can't add anything there, it's a no by default. Um, and we'll make it radio buttons um, and make it mandatory and click save. Again, here we go, information is required. Because it's a mandatory field that we added after this item was added, we now have a missing information. So a required information uh, section here has popped up on the screen. So we can now go back into this and there's a, again, we don't have to click the title. I can just double click here and that will load it up and we can see it wants me to select an option. So I can then say yes, it has been processed or no, it hasn't been processed in this case. I can go back to the list and we can see that no, it hasn't been set up on YouTube and no, it hasn't been processed. Um, but let's assume that it has been set up on process uh, on YouTube. Actually, I'm going to do one more as well, actually, that would be quite handy. So um, we can say, has it been streamed? Has it been streamed? Okay, um, we'll go with yes, it has, or no, it hasn't. We'll lose the third option that I don't need. Um, I just got rid of the yes, I need the yes. Um, I'm going to change this to red for no and green for that. Uh, we'll make it radio buttons again and a mandatory field and we'll click save. So obviously I'm running through this quite fast, but if you need to rewind and check, um, recommend that you go ahead and do that. We're missing information again, so we can come in here, we can double click and we can say, yes, it's been streamed and yes, it's been set up on YouTube because it can't be, it can't be have been streamed if it hadn't been set up on YouTube, right? So they're kind of conditional and we could go into conditional formatting um, and, uh, basically force this one to say something based on the value of this one if we want to get into formulas, um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So the other thing that we can do is actually pick this field up and drag it over here. So now it makes more sense. So we can say, okay, there's a live stream. Uh, it's about VChain. It's going to happen on the 26th. And um, these people are responsible for it. Uh, has it been set up on YouTube? Has it been streamed? And has it YouTube finished processing that data? 
which it hasn't. So ultimately we now have a bit of a process flow that we can then use this in something like Power Automate and take this to multiple different steps if we need to. Um, but for now, this is a very simple, easy to use list that has been created from blank um, in Microsoft Teams. Obviously this sits inside your SharePoint site as well. So if you wanted to use it as a SharePoint list, you can also do that. Um, but the lists are, um, are very, very good features that have been introduced here into Microsoft Teams. And then you can get very custom with these. Uh, I've got things going on in other organizations where um, I'm able to take uh, transactional sales data from websites and put them into a Teams list and create a process flow that links from Power Automate um, to basically track everything um, in these lists and they're just absolutely fantastic ways of managing workloads um, you know if you're if you're used to using something like uh, Microsoft Planner um, in terms of creating tasks and things like that you might actually now want to shift away from Planner and move maybe towards um, lists instead because there are a lot more functionality uh, a lot more functions and uh, ease of use in lists than there are planner. Um, but guys, I just wanted to kind of show how easy and quick it was to actually create a list manually from scratch um, and being able to add some custom formatting such as greens and reds uh, on choice options as well. So if you found this video useful, you know what to do. Um, and with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.